Okay guys, so we are back on my bike. It is a whole nother day, but we are going to see how the bike is running. However, before we do any of that, the lady downstairs, this is her taco delivery bike, and I noticed that the brakes are pretty bad on the front, so they're not adjusted right. We're just gonna really quickly adjust. See, uh, see how it's this one's moving a lot, but this one barely comes off. You gotta adjust the spring on them. It's really easy. That's what these little Phillips has screws for. Equal amount. All right, good. Okay, so we are working on my bike. It is extremely cold out, and that's okay. Uh, I didn't record anymore last night because the battery died again, and uh, it was pitch black out. You definitely couldn't see anything I was doing. So, got home from work. It's a new day, and we're gonna finished working on it. So I put the motor on last night, this, that, and the other. I did start it last night and it started right up. Sounded great. So smooth. It didn't do that rot, 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 weird stuff it was doing, which is kind of weird and also troublesome in a way because you guys already know there was no, ah that was what was broken. There was none of that moment. So what was wrong? I have no idea. Now I'm going to get it off here bring it over to the side and I'm going to show you exactly what I did last night, catch you up to speed so you can see everything going on. I also brought out a tube because Tweaker has a flat tire again. Now, one thing I did have a problem with yesterday was getting it to start as far as the compression. That is one thing that seems much, much different. Here, look, like right now it is up on the pedal. Look how slow it's pushing the compression over on this, the weight of the bike. There. Like, that's how much compression this thing has all seven. Like, it always had good compression, but now it's, like, almost stupid. Let me show you what I did. So last night, so I got rid of the spring tensioner, and I put a conventional tensioner. I also put this on last night. Why? I don't know. Figured why not. So we got ourselves a nice kickstand. We're still not using uh, oh, and I also have to put new gas line on. Well, I don't really have to. I want to. I think it leaks a little. Let's put our gloves on. Let's take it for a spin. Now, this is going to be a cold start for sure. I have not rode this bike at all today. have not tried to start it at all today. So, let's see how she is. Choke is going on. Let's see. Oh, I miss riding this bike. It's so comfy. Oh, one pop. Choke is off. Sorry, you, you can't tell me that that isn't like a perfect start, but it is 20 degrees in the And it started right up. But as we sit right now, it's got a warm up. Uh, but you can hear it. She seems to be running good. She's going okay. Like, our biggest thing is that chain. Now, make sure the chain is I want to make sure the carpet is smooth right. Now you guys know I uh, fixed the fourth. I did a couple things that I felt it really needed. And she's running much better. Now she's ice cold right now. So we got to let it warm up. I think we got to put those fenders on. That might be a good idea to put the fenders on. Riding great. I am in love. All right, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles. So what we got going on today is something very... So what we got going on today is something very fun. We've got a guest appearance from someone that I know. I wouldn't really say friend. He probably considers me a friend. I don't consider him a friend. But I pretend and I'm good at it. So his name is Benjamin, a.k.a. Benny. But he's here today so he could try to learn a little more. But before he can learn anything, you're going to have to do me and him a favor so he can learn is hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the little 
bell notification. Also, if you could, please drop your line down in the comments because I like to talk to everybody. If you could, also keep the conversation going, go over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group and join that. Totally free, and then you could talk and see everything else going on in the community. Okay, cool, great, done, wonderful. We're happy. So what we're doing today is fixing Ben's motor. We're also gonna try not to get aggravated from the questions and the, the, the level of intelligence is like, you know, if I was here and Anthony's here, Benny's like oh my there. God. <laughs> so we're gonna try to, there's a gap is what I'm saying. So we're gonna try to get through all that and just explain what's happening and why it happened. But Benny got a Christmas gift from Santa that involves this box. And let me show you what it is. So, as you know, he got into an accident, got hit by a car, and um, unfortunately he lived and he's fine. So, <laughs> so uh, his bike didn't do good. So, I kind of gave him one of my bikes the other day, and we're currently working on that to make into his new bike. Just for the record, I didn't want to give it to him because I really liked that bike, and it was kind of a bike I've been holding on to for a long time, but I did anyway because it suits his needs at the current moment. Uh, he has a bunch of other bike parts that will work great for that particular frame, so that's why we went with that frame. Uh, it should work out great, but no matter what, I've been hyping up these 49 millimeter iron sleeve motors for a while now, and uh, he, you know, he's seen mine work, he's rode mine, uh, and he's seen the work I, I do, period. It. I love that. He loves it. Uh, it's got a good sound, it's got good feel, got real good pull. Pick up, yes. So that's what I did. I got him his own 49 millimeter iron sleeve cylinder. I'll show you, get this magnet. See this? Aha, steel, iron. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna put this on his motor. We're also gonna take his motor and completely go through it and find out what all's going on in there and say, what's up motor? Just to see what's good. So those are the goals. We gotta port this, we gotta polish the exhaust, we gotta deck it. We got a whole bunch of stuff to do, but we also gotta find out why his motor just sucks so very much. Now, I'm not sure if I recorded. When I first met Ben, I met him through Anthony, okay? You all know Anthony. Ears. Yeah, ears, teabag we call him. We call yeah. him teabag, it's his uh, affectionate nickname from Benny and I. I met him through Anthony, uh, he because he had a motorized bike, Anthony and him struck up a conversation, whatever, but his bike wasn't running right, so he's like, yo, my buddy could fix it, or at least look at it at the bare minimum. So that's right. how I met Benny. He came over, oh, so you hear some noise, but this is this is Benny. Hi. Hello. Um, you've met him in other videos, but just so you know. He came over, I looked at his bike, I fixed it. I don't think I uh, recorded what I did to the actual motor. Basically, I just ripped the cylinder off. It was just so congested with the porting and whatnot. So I just ripped it off, basically. Did a little bit of port work. I don't even think I used a degree wheel on it. No. Just opened it up a bit, put it back together, and it worked better. Good. Worked much better. Um, it was running steadily like it wasn't it wouldn't run right before like it would shut off i think or something like that right yeah yeah so it was running right it was running steady uh it just had more power too that was a big thing um you know he brought it to you it had it had power i thought it had power but when you did the port work you gave it a lot more power and i was very satisfied with it right so it was a, it was a night and day difference and believe me when i tell you compared to the, my motors i'd say it's, it's still not even your still wasn't even close to like, nah. yeah, it still wasn't even like tweaker nah, or nah. the iron or sleeve I had or, or jokester, jokester, nothing. Jokester. It, nah, nah. It's not even comparable. Yeah, nah. But, um, comparable? Is that a word? Compa comparable. comparable yeah. English is my first language, but it's also my most difficult to speak. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finally put this thing on a degree wheel. We're gonna see what numbers the old motor had, just because, you know, I like to do that. I like to keep records of everything so I can always go back and reference if I see something, an issue and stuff. And we're gonna get new numbers for the new motor before port, after port. We're also gonna clean this up 100%. So this is his motor. It is a basic 66 slash 80 cc Chinesium. So it's black, it's in really good shape. It doesn't have that many miles on it. I mean, he rode it a lot, but it was only really for this summer, correct? Yeah. Right, so it was only really for this summer and it wasn't even a whole summer because of the accident. So it doesn't have a lot of miles on it. But 
there's still something going on in the clutch. After I uh, did the work to the motor, it needed more clamp and force because it just wasn't strong enough. And I did that, but I did it through the flower nut, not through the internal cal ca callet or collet, collet and tighten it down with that. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna completely tear the clutch apart, fix that up, clean it up real good. We're gonna make sure the uh, magnets all good, clean the seals are good everything a could once over we're going to check for squish obviously we're going to check to see if we have any space or uh the crank needs to be trued or all that stuff and i'm going to try to show him how to do it or at least explain what we're doing and why at the bare minimum so he can start doing this stuff himself because he doesn't pay me for this work he thinks his oh, friendship is payment I mean, he doesn't say you that, but that's you. what he thinks. Let's be you honest. Must <laughs> let them, the audience know that. Right. So <laughs> he pays me with friendship, and sometimes it's worth it. Most of the time, it's not. <laughs> but, you know, we became buddies uh, because it was either me and Anthony be friends or Benny and I be friends. And let's just face it. That's, You're stuck with me. I'm stuck basically. with I'm stuck with Benny. Yeah. <laughs> so he wants to learn, and I'm I happy to show him because I think everybody should know how to work on their own motor, even if it's just the basics. But I think it's these are really simple. So he didn't realize that you're supposed to grease all this, and uh, he blames me. I didn't tell him, but yeah, you know, I didn't know. I'm still you know, learning. that's fine. It happens. So uh, you can see the dent. See the indent there? How much the ball was wearing into it. But also the main thing is look how hollow and wide out the clutch ball. Yeah, I can't. These things never come out that easy. <laughs> There's so much space. Look how big that hole is. So what does that, um, what does that do? Like, so we'll see if it's still usable. We'll check the rest of the clutch to see how it is, but that is really wallered out. So we'll see. I is mean, it, it pro it's not good. Um, is it bad? I don't know, but it's not good. I mean, as long as it works, it works, but I'm not stressing it. As long as we grease what it from here on out, that put makes your clutch engage and disengage. That's why it's so poor. So that's why your clutch was all screwed up. That's definitely part of it. And that's also why the arm had to go so far in. Before we get measurements or anything, because this is all coming way to right apart, we're going to go ahead. And, guys, you got to look over here, please. All right, thanks. <laughs> so before we do anything else, um, we're going to finish stripping it apart and get the clutch completely out. Basically break it down to the case before we uh, get measurements. See that, that piece that's going in? So by me, by me playing with the flower, it kept pushing this in. That's why it made that dent. Well, the, the ball that fell out? Yeah. So the ball is technically a bearing. Yeah. So when this is on here, right? Yeah. And you got to push this. You pull the pull the clutch lever. That's push. And it pushes it Just in. I took it apart I before I put it on the bike. Shot. I know how to use it. Right? Just because you have one doesn't mean you're mechanically inclined. That has nothing to do with mechanically inclined. Mechanically inclined means you just you can see something mechanical and understand the way it works without being told. You know, it's just how it is, and that's just what I am. I just can I see stuff and I can just understand it. Don't know why or how it's like that, but it's always been like that. The other motor, see how hard it was though to do? Like, you gotta hold that. Yeah. So that's why I, I mean, remember on that video. Let's like, see if I can take it without jamming yeah. anything in there. Yeah. Bear's motor was so jammed, I didn't even have to use anything to hold the stuff. I just, I just did it. <laughs> yeah, well, yours was pretty loose to be honest, but honestly, I think most of them are kind of like that. Uh, I tighten them down hard because I don't, I've had them back apart and come apart while I was riding, and I don't, I don't like that happening. Does this work? Yeah, I've had I've, everything on the motor that can, that can come apart has come apart on me while I'm riding. <laughs> this is so wallered out that this has to push against this. I think this is going to push down into that. That's a problem. Yeah, let's leave that in there. That's the way we're going to try it. Are you taking it out? Yeah, I'm going to take it all apart. I always take this side off as opposed to the clutch basket side. Which I always have, so that's just the way I always do. You can take either side off. But either way, you got to beat it out one or the other. And I always end up beating it this way, out the other way. Because I like to leave the basket on if possible. Just tighten it in there, make sure it's... These strip real easy, so you got to make sure you get as many teeth grabbing as possible. I have a feeling yours is going to be pretty easy regardless. Are you tightening it? Tightening it to take it apart. It's just pushing on the thing, which means this is definitely screwing down into your... Your, what you call it, your basket, your clutch. Don't you gotta take this off? The gear? Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm trying to take off. This is a gear puller. Oh, what you put on there was a gear puller. It's a gear puller, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There we go. We got her. Uh, end of my screwdriver that broke off. Broke off because I use it the way I'm using it right now. <laughs> 
it was so messy in there I couldn't see it and I didn't think about it. What's that, the keyway? Yeah, keyway. What is that? That keeps, keeps the gear it? from spinning. Come at all. Doesn't look like it. Not like this, but not like that. Get this. We gotta put it on the floor. It's just absorbing the, the shock. Okay, so allow me to show you what nonsense just transpired. Because it wasn't greased properly, the clutch was really welded into the bearing well. If you look on here on the shaft, you can see, see all the lines running up and down? That's for me beating this out of the bearing. So the reason I had to beat it like that, normally it takes a couple taps. Like there's, there's no doubt it takes a couple taps normally. Having to beat it the way I did uh, is because it was, it got heat like amazing amounts of heat put into it and it just way over done so is what it is problem with that is of course there's a problem is we had to go outside i couldn't do it on the vice i couldn't do it on the table i was worried about breaking the wood because i was hitting it that hard so we went to the floor and i tried to brace it up and stuff and it just wasn't enough and it still wasn't going so i went outside to the curb this way i could hang the clutch over the the you know the edge of the curb so I make sure it doesn't contact with anything and beat it out. Well, I had him standing on this, and then the, the cur like here, if you, if, you were, if you were him, his foot would be here, and then this part, the clutch basket and all, was hanging off the curb. So the, the curb was like right here, okay? Here, and he was standing on this part, but on this side. So when he was standing on it, right on the edge, he had just a slightest little stumble just as I went down, and mind you, his foot was right here. So I only had this little area to get, which ain't bad. It's not like it was that close, but it's close enough where, you know, you, you worry if a little wiggle happens, you're gonna mess up. Well, a little wiggle happened. And just as he wiggled, he wiggled this way. And I hit right here on this thing and look, it cracked it. So the case has got a nice crack right here and it goes all the way to here, stops. And then it's just bent from here to here. Obviously, 99% of people are gonna say the case is crap. And yes, if you're doing a high-end build or whatnot, it is definitely garbage for that. It still seals, it still has everything, it still holds the bearing. There's still nothing wrong with the case outside of the fact that you need three connection points for the clutch plate to work properly, otherwise it will have deflection. So that's why you need these spots so that when you squeeze on the clutch, it doesn't deflect off of the motor. With this being like this, it will 100% have deflection. And I'd say within the first day, probably the first hour of riding it, more than likely break this completely off within the first hour. So the only other option, well, there's really two options at this point. And the options are get a new complete case or at least the left side of the case which is a you know valid option and could work would it's probably the best option let's put that there probably the best option that i would suggest most people to take unless you're me so i've actually had this happen many times not because of this this is the first time i ever hit it myself and it broke off normally what happens is the chain gets jammed here and snaps this off Okay, that's what I've had happen many times. But either way, no matter how you get to this point, the solution is still the same. The first motor I ever did it to was Heather's old motor. This is her old motor. Now I never touched this thing. We took it off the bike and I never touched it again. It seized up as it sits here. The only thing I ever did to it was I took the clutch out of it for another build. But hers did the same thing. You see the top bolt, it's broken. See that it's missing here? It's completely missing. So this is what I did. Uh, the first time I drilled it, I drilled too high. But the second time, I got it right. All you do is you drill through it, drill through the other side, and what happens is the chain goes over it and the chain comes under it. Chain does not touch this in any way. It rides in the middle of the chain. The first time I drilled, I did it without measuring, just thinking, oh, that's probably good. It wasn't even close. It had to be down here. So I fixed it on the second go around. But the main thing here is there's no deflection then. You need that third anchor point for it not to deflect. Now you can't just drill a hole and drill a hole and clamp it, because if you clamp it, it will just crush and break. You have to have a spacer. I don't know if you guys could tell what this is, but this is out of like a brake handle or a clutch cable. This is the, the quick adjustment 
uh, to adjust your brakes or cape, you know, whatever cable throw you're using, this is to adjust it at the end of your lever. So uh, it was almost a perfect length with one washer on this side and a washer over here. It was perfect width through that in there and I never had another problem. Now this happened way early in the build. I wanna say the motor was only like a day or two old when that happened. It was a real bummer. At first we thought for sure her brand new motor was trash because of it, but uh, I fixed it with that and it worked for, man, I don't even know, her motor probably had, her motor got as many as mine, probably 10, 15,000 miles on it, I bet, easy, easy 10,000, maybe 15 plus. I mean, we rode it everywhere, she, well, she rode it everywhere and she rode a lot. She rode as much as me, just opposite directions because, you know, she had things to do and I had things to do, so whatever. So I know for a fact that it's tried, trued and tested and it will work. It does suck that it broke, but is what it is. All right, so we are all broken down. Uh, I am now by myself. Benny had to leave. He's got a hot date to get to. I showed you the uh, case I cracked. We can work with that, not a big deal. Uh, I'm gonna have to put a new clutch um, armature in or whatever you wanna call it, the, the shaft, because uh, it's now, it was all wallowed out to begin with. Uh, there's a piece of plastic stuck in there from my handle from beating on it. I had a hit directly on the metal and that ended up squishing the threads and what you call it, because there wasn't much metal here to begin with. So it was really, um, really weak but whatever the clutch is out so that's what it is things we did see immediately though uh, that are a definite problem things like uh, here for instance if you look see there can you see the lines running around it get a little closer see the lines running around it this was spinning inside the bearing at one point for a little bit also big things here look at the heat look at the color see how this is like a bronze and this is copper here so the head was getting very hot really bad very noticeable once I got the piston off though, I already knew it was gonna be like that because when I looked at the wrist pin, it looks like that. It's got dings all the way around. These are really bad and you can feel it everywhere. So that's no good. The wrist pin is definitely trash. The piston itself is actually good and I will save it. Uh, the rings are okay. I will definitely use it on something else. It did have a couple marks from rubbing uh, what i think that was from is the chrome lining i already threw it out well benny did he took it out when he left the cylinder i was going to keep it and use it for another build most likely bears motor when he blows it up again <laughs> not really funny that one is too true to actually be funny uh, i was going to save it but the chrome lining actually started coming off all on the exhaust side a little bit above the transfer so that's just shot we are going to take all this stuff i'm going to give it a once over cleaning to get the big stuff off and then we're going to throw it into my ultrasonic cleaner to get the uh real hard dirt like this stuff the carbon it will it will pop all this carbon right off it might take two cycles to do it but it does a very good job so that's what i'm going to do we will be reusing the head we'll be reusing everything but the piston Wrist pin, wrist pin bearing, everything else will be getting reused pretty much. Uh, oh, the, it's gonna need a new intake. The kit comes with new gaskets. And I'm not sure if we'll use the gaskets yet. We're definitely not gonna use a case gasket. There was a lot of left to right play in the bearing. A lot of left to right play. So I don't know if we're gonna reuse the, uh, or not reuse, I don't think we're gonna put a case gasket in because we need to get rid of that anyway. And as far as the base gasket, I don't know until I get the cylinder on the case and the case back together and what have you. So we got a little bit of work ahead of us, but nothing too crazy. So let me finish uh, getting all this stuff cleaned up for the most part so I can throw it in there and then we can get started on reassembly. I just got to clean off the gasket. There was only a little bit left. So I threw, I threw the case, I threw everything in my ultrasonic cleaner. That thing is amazing. It does such a good job. Like even the gasket, the actual gasket, it removes. It doesn't remove the like the gasket maker or the, like the moto seal. I mean, maybe it would if I let it in there long enough or, you know, gave it enough tries. It might, but it does remove even the gasket. It's not abrasive or anything like that. It's super mild. It's like putting something in a gentle cycle that's on steroids. It's kind of hard to describe, but it works really well. We still got to do final grind and finish work on the exhaust. So let's show you that first. So we still got to do finish work on the exhaust, but I'm not doing anything crazy. Basically only opening up to the actual aluminum port of the cylinder. So not a big deal. The bottom, I only opened it up to the port 
nothing more you can see how it's still black when I go in with the finishing grinder and the sander wheels uh, the barrels I'll end up taking and cleaning all that up real nice the intake uh, we're not gonna get a measurement on the intake actually I might get a uh, measurement on the intake uh, even though it's gonna go read I'll get a measurement on what it is as if it wasn't a read as, as if it was a piston port motor I'll get uh, a measurement just for out of curiosity but this is the intake then the transfers so I tried to make sure uh, I did something a little different. I only opened them up. Uh, this one I did a little bit more, unfortunately, but I only opened it up to the intake side where you want the charge to go. So I tried really hard not to go too much on the exhaust side because I usually open up the entire transfer port, uh, still directing it at the intake, but I feel like I'm losing a little bit because it's opened up so much towards the exhaust. So I think they look really good. Um, I got that line in there so you can see I went right to the bottom of the line so everything seems real symmetrical and even and I got them both opened up nice now you can see how much less of the aluminum I ground to get to that line and then look at this one see how much more of the I know those might not seem it but like there's a, a even line all the way across to get to the line to get to the same measurement so it just shows how uneven these castings are you know it might only be you know a couple thousands but that's you know that's something let's get the finish work done on the exhaust and then we're going to do a quick little cleanup on the whole thing and that it is what it is we're not going to go any more from there and oh actually before i do cleanup i got to do a port match i mean i really don't have to we're not going for insane tolerances here yeah i don't think i'm gonna i don't think i'm gonna port match the case uh, port match meaning take the case and match it up to the each side like how this sits on top right so there's a half a case here and a half a case here so what i would do then is put that case on with the two bolts so it's where it's going to be and then i would either grind the cylinder away or grind the case away so that they're perfectly matched up because the air goes into the intake and then into the case and then when the piston comes down it pushes it up into the transfer ports so what happens is it, the air is going this way so if there's a ledge on the case it doesn't matter because it's still going to go over into the port regardless it's not going to be very turbulent but if it's a ledge on the cylinder that's an obstruction and causes a problem the only thing i'm worried about is if i don't do it a lot of times in this area yeah on the intake side in this fatter area where it is a tighter v you will have a little bit of a bump out and it can clog the port so i still might just double check even though i really don't want to get that involved i still might do it just because you can't breathe choir <laughs> like, like you are so loud because i'm i'm sitting like this i'm slouched you know sit up and breathe normal man uh, I don't like quiet to, breathing I don't have so we're gonna see guys we might have to take and clear the case up and maybe we can get away with not doing anything extra i really don't want to do too much extra not because i don't want to it's just because i don't want to yeah that makes sense i just don't want to get that involved with this one i want to keep it more stock ish so if there's any issue it's just the tolerances are basic you know what i mean you can still make a lot of power with stock tolerances without going insane the more stock you are the less chance you have of breaking as long as you take out those weak links in the stock armor if that makes sense get what i'm saying now all right we're going to give you a quick little rundown here so you can see how she looks exhaust port so i went the highest grip paper i had on my drum which I think is only like a 120. So it's not a high polish, but it still comes out pretty smooth to the touch. Exhaust looks A-OK -okay to me. Got the windowed piston, not bad. Came out A-OK. -okay. Uh, for the record, did my recessed holes. I did my secondary hole for the oiling hole all the way down, drilled in. Both the case halves, I matched it for the transfer ports. Wasn't a whole lot, just a little bit. This one required a little bit more, as you can see. So this is all port match and should be extremely good to go. Next step is assembly. So let's get going on that. Okay, so we got everything that we need done, done. As far as I can think, remember, figure out all that jazz. So the next step in assembly is assembling. So what we're gonna do, bibbity boppity boo, is we start assembling. I'm using my Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube by Permatex. Yep, the Perma-a-texts. Okay, so 
I put three drop and I work the bearing around just to make sure it's around the whole thing. The reason I'm using assembly lube is it's, it, it sticks to the bones a little better. You know what I mean? It's uh, real thick stuff. It's hard to tell, but I don't know if you can see it even moving. It doesn't move very fast. It's slow moving. It's very thick. Our next step is going to be putting together the case. So we're going to no case gasket. We're going to be doing uh, ultra gray on the case itself. I just got to dig out all the bolts, but I think I'm actually going to dig out some new bolts and try to find some Allen headed bolts because they're just better than these Phillips head. Okay, this is how I set for top dead or bottom dead. I have the piston, I have the, this on, it's just loosely fit, okay? Now I have my pointer on where about it's gonna be. I have the piston in, I have two bolts holding this down and this is what I do so all I do is I take and I take the flathead I prefer uh, like a box end wrench or something because it's bigger and smoother in some spots for this particular instance now I'm saying don't do it this way this is how I do it but this is also the easiest way I find to get it accurate so I just take this I put it in just a little bit on top of the piston and then I push up against the port now that means the piston is all the way down meaning it is at bottom dead center B D C okay now it is close and it is tight and I'm gonna move my pointer so that it is bottom dead center so you see me do this that's so that it naturally rests where bottom dead is because you know there's a dwell that's why I do that and then once the pointer's there it's good now the reason you do the piston stop is to make sure you have it set up correctly now this should be stuck because I don't have the head gasket in so it should stop somewhere it is stopping at we just i can't really camera's right in the way now two 12 right 12 degrees uh after top dead and it is stopping what you say 12 degrees before top dead so it's perfectly lined up this is how i set up my degree wheel everyone says use a piston stop the only reason it's piston stopping right now is i don't have a head gasket in so the piston is literally touching the head do a piston stop don't do a piston stop i wouldn't even have done that if the head wasn't like that. i don't do a piston stop i'm gonna be honest once i know that it is at bottom dead center this can't go anywhere because the pressure I'm, when i push up it sticks and it does it, it literally can't move so when i'm pushing up on the screwdriver it pushes down on the piston and the crank and i do that so it just naturally sets i do it a couple times to make sure and every time it sets exactly where i put it that means it is at bottom dead center. Of course, you wanna measure everything off the of top dead and we'll get there once we get the top off. Now we're gonna do measurements on all the ports. You see how I set up the degree wheel? Now let's start measuring stuff. I got transfers written down first, so I'm gonna measure the transfers first. 126, that's good. I said originally said I wanted to have the transfers at 124, so we're at 126. That's great. Good, good, good. Now let's do the exhaust looks like 100 to me so we're opening at 100. that is only 17 degrees of blowdown as it sits the blowdown was 21 degrees before blowdown is not enough blowdown we need more blowdown than that i think i'm gonna have to go back in and do some work to this cylinder that's okay so 260 close that gives us 160 degrees of duration which honestly ain't horrible but we need a little more blow down than that. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna raise that exhaust 